Let's explain a little bit more about a DNA probe or a gene probe and using those DNA probes when screening for a genetic disorder. This is module eight for AQA. So here I've done you a little picture to show you a gene probe. So a gene probe is a short single stranded uh, DNA. So a short single strand of DNA. And what's important about this gene probe is that the base sequence is complementary to a sequence of bases in the allele or the gene of interest. So we might be interested in locating a harmful allele that leads to a genetic disorder or a mutated version of an allele. And if we know the base sequence of that allele, we can then manufacture a gene probe that has a complementary base sequence. And obviously since completion of the Human Genome Project, we know the base sequence of human genes. So we know the sequence of say this, allele, which could be a harmful or mutated allele, we can then use a gene machine to manufacture a gene probe, which is a short single stranded DNA molecule that will be complementary to the base sequence in the allele of interest. The other thing we should know about a gene probe is it's labeled, right? So it's labeled with, you could say either a radioactive marker which you can later visualize using X-ray film in a technique called autoradiography. Or in my example, it's labeled with a fluorescent marker, which you can later visualize using UV light and the fluorescent marker will glow. So I think we've covered three important things so far about a DNA probe. It's short, it's a single strand of DNA. It's labeled with either a radioactive marker or a fluorescent marker or label and its base sequence is going to be complementary to the base sequence in the allele of interest, the allele we're trying to locate, right, in the person's DNA. Now, when you add the DNA probe to the fragments of DNA from the individual, obviously what's going to happen, because the bases are complementary, the DNA probe is going to hybridize, it's going to join with the individual's DNA. In simple terms, it's like hydrogen bonds are going to form, right? Because you've got complementary bases. A bases are going to form hydrogen bonds with T bases and G bases are going to form hydrogen bonds with C bases. So the probe is going to anneal or it's going to hybridize. It's called hybridize because it makes like hybrid DNA, right? Between the DNA probe and the individual's DNA fragment. So that's kind of how they work in a nutshell. So let's go through like a whole story where we could use a DNA probe. So you'd have to get a sample of DNA from the individual that was having genetic screening. So you'd get a sample of their DNA. You'd probably use the polymerase chain reaction to amplify the DNA sample because you're probably only going to have a small amount of it, right? And you want more of it so that you can actually use gel electrophoresis and then locate any of these harmful alleles. So take your sample of DNA, use PCR to amplify it. Then you're going to uh, cut into fragments. So you've got shorter fragments of DNA. Obviously, this is using restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases, if you want to call them that. Then you can use gel electrophoresis, which I've tried to show you over here. So you put the DNA fragments into wells on the gel at the negative electrode or the cathode end. They will move towards the positive electrode, which is the anode. And the reason they move towards the positive electrode is because DNA contains phosphate groups, which are negatively charged. So they're attracted to the positively charged anode. Once that current is applied across the gel, they're going to move towards the anode and they're going to be separated based on that negative charge and the fact that the fragments will be different sizes or different lengths. So they'll move different distances in the gel. Then what you can do is make the DNA single stranded, which you're going to need to do, right, if you're going to be adding DNA probes that you want to bind to any alleles of interest, you are going to need to make the DNA single stranded so that can happen. Transfer to nylon membrane. 
very, very similar. It's kind of the same process as making a genetic fingerprint, right? Same things involved. Transfer it to a nylon membrane, then you add the DNA probes. And remember, the DNA probes that have been manufactured are complementary in base sequence to specific alleles of interests, alleles that potentially are harmful, mutated, or lead to a genetic disorder. So, and I need a green pen for this, I feel, when you add those DNA probes, if the individual had the allele of interest, therefore they had the complementary base sequence to the probe, the probe will be able to bind to the DNA fragment or hybridize with the DNA fragment. And then you'll be able to visualize that that probe has bound. So you'll add the DNA probes. You will then have to rinse the membrane to remove or wash away any unbound probes. Then you use your visualization technique. So if you've used a fluorescently labeled DNA probe, your visualization would be with UV light. If you've used a radioactive marker on your DNA probe, then you would use X-ray film or autoradiography to visualize it. But here, I've added DNA probes with fluorescent markers attached. Obviously, they had this particular allele of interest in their DNA. The probe has been able to bind or hybridize because the base sequence is complementary. When I shine UV light over this membrane, that is going to glow. That's going to tell me the probe is there. The probe has bound. The fluorescent marker is there. Then I know they must have had that allele. So I'm detecting the presence of this particular allele in this person's DNA using a DNA probe. Now, what's important for you? Make sure you know what a DNA probe is. Make sure you understand the basic idea of how they work, complementary base pairing, to a base sequence on an allele of interest, but then make sure you can piece together your other techniques from the gene technology unit. So you could explain how you can go all the way from just having a sample of their DNA, amplifying it, cutting it, using gel electrophoresis to separate the fragments, then adding the DNA probes once you've made the DNA single stranded, and then visualizing so you can see where the probes have annealed and therefore which alleles that individual has. And that's it.